polycystic ovary syndrome is the topic, abbreviated PCOS. And PCOS is a rather interesting uh, medical condition, and the hallmarks of it involve elevated LH. LH is luteinizing hormone. And in addition to this, a woman will also develop insulin resistance. And this eventually leads to the following three problems. The first thing is you have ovarian growth. The next thing is you have this ovarian cyst formation, hence the name of the medical condition. And third, and equally as important, is this androgen production. And these things will lead to all the symptomatology. So what are the symptoms? Well, the most important symptoms of PCOS involve essentially the signs of androgen excess. So when a woman does have increased amounts of androgens, there are certain specific consequences that occur. And the first is hirsutism, which essentially means an excess of hair, uh, facial hair, for example. And in addition, a woman will develop acne. Now, another uh, couple of things that happen uh, in PCOS that are characteristic on a physical exam is that the woman will have gained quite a bit of weight. And the final thing that I wanted to mention that's very important in the presenting symptoms is irregular menses. This is a big one. This is oftentimes the most troublesome uh, problem. And amenorrhea is really sometimes reported. And this can of course lead to infertility. So as you can see PCOS is a very significant disorder. So how do you diagnose this? Well, of course, you know, the, the patient presentation in terms of their complaints and their symptoms, but there are very specific lab tests as well. The first test, of course, is to test a serum testosterone level. And this will be elevated. The next two tests are LH, luteinizing hormone, and FSH, follicle stimulating hormone. The LH will be slightly elevated, and the FSH may be decreased. But what's more important than the individual lab values is the ratio of LH to FSH. And that ratio will, can be as high as 3 to 1, or a better way to write it is 3 over 1. Other lab tests that are involved include a prolactin, prolactin level, a TSH level, but definitely a definitive imaging test will be very important to conduct, and that is a pelvic ultrasound. And the pelvic ultrasound will allow you to visualize the enlarged follicles that exist in the ovary. And these follicles normally are between 2 and 10 millimeters, but in PCOS they will be greater than 10 millimeters in size. Now remember, to have PCOS you must have at least two of the following three criteria to make a definitive diagnosis. The first one is the woman should have a presenting complaint of irregular menses. The next complaint is some evidence on physical exam of androgen excess. So for example, if she has hirsutism, acne, things like that. And the third diagnostic criteria essentially involves having polycystic ovaries that you can uh, detect on a pelvic ultrasound, usually greater than 10 follicles per ovary. So if you have two of these three, then it satisfies the diagnostic criteria for polycystic ovarian syndrome. So how do you treat it? Well, 
If pregnancy is not desired, then you can give oral contraceptive pills. And these OCPs help to suppress the androgen metabolism. And that will subsequently decrease the testosterone levels. And they can also help to decrease the LH levels as well. So that's why or oral contraceptives are given. Weight loss is another common uh, piece of advice that's given to a woman with PCOS. Now if contraception is desired, if pregnancy is desired, then there's two medications that are commonly used. The first is metformin. And the reason metformin is given is because it helps with the insulin resistance and uh, helps with insulin sensitivity. And the second medication that's given that is a little bit more effective in inducing or helping ovulation is clomiphene. And that basically is a medication that's used as an infertility drug. So let's take a look at some clinical vignettes and get a better understanding of what this is all about. 24-year-old female comes in for a new patient visit with complaints of missed menstrual cycles. She states her period has never been regular and that in the past it was common for her to skip a month or two between cycles. However, she has not had a period in the past seven months. She denies sexual activity, reports no medical problems, and with her only medication being a face wash for acne. On review of symptoms, she reports a weight gain of 10 pounds over the past year. FSH is 8.7, LH is 22, estradiol of 45, TSH 2.2, prolactin of 12, total testosterone of 98. Most likely diagnosis is. Okay, well at first it may not be completely obvious, but let's go through this. She has missed menstrual cycles, so she's got amenorrhea. In fact, she's saying seven months she hasn't had a period. She's got weight gain. Um, wouldn't say that she's quite obese yet, but definitely weight gain. The LH to FSH ratio is pretty high. 22 over 8 it is approaching 3. And that's very characteristic of PCOS. And the testosterone level of 98 is also high. So that would put her with the diagnosis of polycystic ovary syndrome. Next question. 30-year-old woman presents to your office with an ultrasound report stating that she has polycystic appearing ovaries. She has a friend who has PCOS and is currently having trouble conceiving and wants to know what this means for her. You tell her that she may have PCOS if she also has. If she also is one of the following. Now let's go through this. Occasionally skips a menstrual cycle. That by itself is not enough to diagnose PCOS. Let's actually list the things that you need before we go through the rest of the choices. Probably easier to do that. You need two of these three criteria. The first thing is irregular menses. And the second thing is some sign of androgen excess. And the third and final thing is basically polycystic ovaries that you can see on a pelvic ultrasound. So occasionally skips a menstrual cycle isn't really the same as irregular menses or amenorrhea. Is obese? Obesity by itself is not uh, indicative of PCOS. Is her suit? Well, that definitely is part of androgen excess, so we'll save that. Has diabetes? Diabetes by itself does not indicate that a person has PCOS. And elevated LH levels also does not mean the person has PCOS. The only one of these that is actually part of the criteria is being her suit. Next question. A 28-year-old female sees you with complaint of irregular menses. She has not had a menstrual period for six months. She is also concerned about weight gain, worsening acne, and dark hair on her upper lip, chin, and periareolar region. She is also interested in becoming pregnant soon. She tells you that she started an exercise program, which has helped her with weight loss, but she continues to have amenorrhea. She has a negative urine beta HCG test, mild elevation in free testosterone, and glucose intolerance. Which one of the following would you consider initially for inducing ovulation? 
Well, there's two medications that are used. The first is metformin. That helps with insulin sensitivity. And the next one is clomiphene, which helps induce ovulation. So of those choices that they list, the only one is metformin in this question. Next question. An obese 32-year-old female has not conceived after more than four years of unprotected intercourse. You perform an appropriate workup and diagnose polycystic ovary syndrome. Of the following, the most effective management for her infertility would be. Well, in this question, they mention one of these two also, and that is choice D, clomiphene, which will help induce ovulation in her since she has polycystic ovary syndrome.